Hello everyone and welcome to day five of the Lumberjack Sew Along. Today we are adding the hood or the collar. I'm doing the collar because I find the hood to be a little easier. So I'm going to, I wanted to show in the video an option that's a little more difficult. If you're doing the hood, you're stitching first the crown of the hood, both the lining and the main, right sides together. Then you're putting them together, uh, um, right sides together and stitching the front opening of the hood. Turn, top stitch and simply add to the collar and finish with a single um, fold um, bias tape. Super easy, super easy. So let's do the collar, which is what uh, I feel scares more people. But it's not that difficult. If you've added the cuff yesterday, it's pretty much doing the same thing only on the neckline, like we did with the cuff. So let's start by uh, making sure that you've interfaced your pieces. So you should have for the top of the collar, one piece like this that's not interfaced that's the outer and another piece that is interfaced that is the lining so we're going to stitch those right sides together like so along this side this side and this side so we're going to stitch them with a half an inch seam allowance you can pin in place if you want to This creates the part of the collar that folds over. Again, the lining is the one that has the interfaces. And it looks like it might be a little off there. We're going to trim the seam allowance and the um, corners, like diagonally, all the way around to reduce the bulk. And we're going to fold over and press. Okay, corners. And there we go. So let's turn the collar right side out. Push the corners out. And run it along the seams. Now we can top stitch this part. Okay. I'm top stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the seam, the edge. If I press this, it would be easier. So I encourage you to press your collar when you after you turn it right side out, and then top stitch it. Grab the collar stand and you should have again a main piece and a lining. The lining has interfacing on it and I also went ahead and, and uh, pressed 
half an inch on the bottom part. So the bottom of the stand is not where the curve is, is on the other side, the long, the longest side. So fold that half an inch. Now we're going to find the center of this and mark it. Same thing for the main, we're going to find the center of the top part. Okay, and mark it. And now we're going to sandwich the color that we just did in between the color stands, right sides together. Okay, so take your uh, color, find the center once again, and match it with the center of the color stand, lining to lining and main to main. Okay, right now I'm adding the lining and I'm pinning through all the layers. Okay, so now this is my main, this is my main, and I'm pinning through all the layers. I realized I used the same fabric, so that's why I'm repeating. Okay, so this is pinned. You should have excess here on the side. Now take your lining, the one that has the interfacing on, match the center, again, right sides together, like so. So now on this side, your lining of the color is matching the lining of the color stand. And pin in place and we're going to stitch all around with a half an inch seam allowance. And here, you're going to pin all the way, including the curve here, and you're going to keep this folded, just like we did yesterday for the cuff, remember? So we keep that folded and pin with it folded. Okay, same thing on this side. So now we have a sandwich of the two color stands and the actual color in between, right sides together. And we're going to stitch all around the curve with a half an inch seam allowance, stitching over the side fold. Go slow along the curve and then go slow when you have multiple layers because you have a lot of layers and interfacing. Make sure that you have a nice smooth curve, not uh, um, edgy. Like here, see, it went, it veered off a little bit, so that's not a smooth curve. I'm going to restitch a little bit there to make sure that my curve is nice and pretty. Much better. Let's trim off the seam allowance along, and I like to start here, not all the way down, because I need that part. You need to leave this half an inch. So I start above it, and I trim the excess seam allowance. You can use pinking shears for this to reduce bulk. And again, when I get to the other side, I don't go all the way down. I go like so. I leave this part here because this will help me when I add it to the actual color. Okay, let's turn it. And we're not top stitching right now. We're gonna top stitch it as we attach it to the shirt. But you can definitely give it a good press right now. Do a little finger press here. 
since we're not top stitching quite yet. Okay, the curve is nice. So now what we want to do is find the center of the bottom right here. Of the raw edge. Okay, so I'm gonna snip that. And we're going to take the shirt, mark the center of the back, neckline, the same way, and we're going to work with both uh, yokes at the same time. And if you're doing the lined option, again, remember yesterday I said now you're treating the piece as one thing. So you're working with all the layers at the same time. So this is my center back. I'm going to match this to this and pin all around. This should be going all the way here. So you can put a couple of pins on the center, but then come to the uh, outside part and you'll see that this edge here will match the uh, folded edge of the placket. And again, we're only pinning, see, it's one to one ratio. We're only pinning the main one, not the part that is interfaced, only the main. Just like we did for the cuffs yesterday. Use as many pins or clips as you feel comfortable with. Okay, so let's go on the other side. Again, this is where the edge is folded. I'm going to bring this folded part here and match it like so. Okay, with the edge. Here so you can see that edge and now all the way around if you followed the pattern and the correct seam allowances this should is one to one ratio Now your collar is pinned in place with only the main part to the shirt, okay? So let's stitch this with a half an inch seam allowance. Again, only through the main, just like we did for the cuff yesterday. it easier to sew with the shirt on the needle plate and the cuff at the top not the, sorry not the cuff the collar at the top but whatever works for you make sure that there's no puckers everything should be nice and smooth Get to the other side we're not going to stitch through the lining only on the let me see if I can show you a close-up so see how I stitched only through the main, not, not the lining. The lining is right here. So now, 
we're going to fold this over and see how nicely it just all folds right into place and we're going to enclose the puff the, oh i keep saying puff enclose the collar in there the raw edge so there will be no raw edge and it's all flushed beautifully on this side see how beautiful is flushed here so put the seam allowance in there if you see that it's a little too bulky don't be afraid to trim just a little corner not all the way down but just a little corner of the seam allowance so you reduce some of the bulk so we're going to fold that over I'll put a clip right there like so and we're going to use actual pins for the rest because your seam allowance will go up okay and you're going to bring the folded edge down like so and enclose everything exactly like we did for the cuffs same thing on the other side let me just remove a little bit of the excess here bulk so we're bringing the shirt seam allowance into the collar stand like so and pin it in good place and it's nice and flushed with the edge and then using some pins because you can't really use clips you can pin all the way around or you can use some double sided tape if you have to hold this down whatever you have handy let's see this will enclose your raw edge and give it a beautiful finish on the inside if you're doing the hood option you're finishing the inside with um, single fold uh, bias tape and I encourage you to get those pre-made from craft stores then make your own it's uh, I don't think it's worth the time to be honest with you to make your own bias tape but if you want to because you want a specific print you definitely can okay and then the same thing on the other side we're going to pin make sure there's no puckers everything is nice and smooth and this is the last stitching we're doing today tomorrow we're hemming the bottom and adding whatever closures you prefer button snaps I'm a snaps kind of a person. Okay, so this is the collar pinned. Now we're going to go and sew all around the collar stamp. All the way around. So this will top stitch everything. place a little bit and get to work okay. go slow make sure there is no puckers as you stitch again I'm not stitching over my pins I'm pulling them out I don't have time for any trips to the hospital
finish the color the bottom part of the color stem you're going to pivot with your needle down and go all the way around the top part go slow on the curve Then go slow on the curve and finish at the corner where you started. Backstitch and you are done with the color. You did it. You made the shirt color that looks beautiful, that looks neatly finished. Let's trim the threads. admire the work. I know a lot of people are afraid of button-up shirts because of the colors. But see, it's not difficult. See how nicely it flushes here? As long as you follow the seam allowance, everything will look beautiful. Okay, so give it a good press. Snap a picture of your beautiful color or hood and post it in the day five photo of the Sew Along album. That will be your check-in for today. Come back here on the blog and on the YouTube channel for our final steps when we'll be hemming the shirt and adding our closures. I'll talk to you soon. Bye!